Christ. Spiritual blessings in Christ. And we're uh, number 25 today starting out. And uh, yesterday was spending more time. So far we have 78 down and, uh, and still looking. And so we praise God for that. Didn't know how many spiritual blessings we had in Christ. But there are a lot of them. And uh, it's, it's fantastic. And many of them found, over 30 of them, found just in the book of Ephesians alone. And so we thank God for that. And that's where we're going to be starting out this morning. Again, is back in the book of Ephesians. Uh, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 3 and chapter 2 and move on as we look at our 25th spiritual blessing we have in Christ uh, today. And it's fantastic. So let me thank all of you for coming. Trust everybody got some good rest and work this week. Trust you had some uh, good sleep, good, good meals, all that good stuff, and that God's been good to you. And you've been blessed this week. You got some rain this week. So praise the Lord for all those good things. Amen. And I was thinking this morning as to why we've come today. Why are we here? And I woke up saying, you know, this is a, this is a day the Lord has made. Amen. I said, we need to rejoice and be glad in it. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, we don't have to wait till Sunday to rejoice and be glad because every day the Lord makes. But today is Sunday, the first day of the week. And the book of Acts says believers met on the first day of the week and they came to worship the Lord. And Acts tells us how they worshiped the Lord. And they worshiped the Lord through prayer. They worshiped the Lord through uh, giving. They worshiped the Lord through the Lord's Supper. They worshiped the Lord through doctrine, sound biblical doctrine. And so that's what we're doing this morning. We're here today for Sunday to worship the Lord and to worship Him in song and spirit and in truth by fellowshipping. That was part of their worship. Prayer, that's part of the worship. Giving's part of the worship. Studying the Word of God, sound doctrine, all of that is part of worship. So that's why we're here today. And so uh, let's get into God's Word this morning as we look in Ephesians. Let's pray. And we'll get into some spiritual blessings that ought to cause some of you to at least to say amen or praise the Lord as we see what we have in Christ. Father, thank you for today. What a beautiful, gorgeous day it is today. Thank you for the beautiful sunrise, the cool morning. Thank you for all the birds singing and praising the Lord this morning. And we thank you for traveling mercies here. Thank you for the provisions you've given us this week. And now, Lord, as uh, last night closed out the week, and this morning begins a brand new week, Sunday, the first day of the week. And what a way to start off our week is in God's house, praising and worshiping you. So praise the Lord. Ask your Holy Spirit now to be our teacher and our guide as he guides us into all truth. And he's our teacher. He'll bring to remembrance the things Jesus has said to us. He will give us illumination, understanding, and then we will ask him for wisdom and how to apply uh, the understanding that we're going to gain this morning. And we'll thank you for it and praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let's read in chapter 2 with me, if you would, please. Chapter 2 and verse number 18. Everybody in chapter 2, verse 18? Open your Bibles to Ephesians, chapter 2. You'll need your Bibles open to follow along as we read the Scripture. In chapter 2, verse 18, uh, the Bible says, For the, through Him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Okay, what do we have? We have access unto the Father. Look at chapter 3 and verse number 12 now. Chapter 3 and verse number 12. Okay, in whom, that is in Christ, we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of Him, the faith of Christ. So the interesting, one of your spiritual blessings this morning is that guess what? You have access to God. That's a spiritual blessing. By the way, that's only for believers. For those that know the Lord Jesus Christ, been saved and born again. Look at your wonderful spiritual blessing. You have access to God the Father. You have access to the God of creation to the creator of the universe. You have access to the one and only God. Think about that for a moment. At any time, given anywhere, any place, any moment, you have access to God. You don't have to go through somebody. You don't have to call somebody up. 
You know, you don't even have to call and get in line for heaven. Don't you love calling all these places and all you get is recorded messages? And this is being recorded, and just to let you know, your wait time will be approximately 35 minutes. Some even even longer than that. And if you'd like, you could leave your number, and some agent or someone will call you back just as soon as there's availability or an opportunity. I mean, don't you love it? Aren't you glad uh, you don't have to do that? Or you get on the line, and they say, yes, may we help you? And they remind us that this is being recorded. And that part I like. I tell them, I say, I'm glad you're recording this. And uh, uh, what can we do? And say, well, oh, well, that's in a different department. Let me transfer you over to them. And then you get transferred over to them. And what do you usually get? You don't get a person. You get another recording. And they'll tell you to wait and punch this number, punch that number, and, and then you may get another person. How can we help you? Well, I was transferred over to you by so-and-so because they said you could ha- handle my problem. Well, what is it? And you tell them, oh, that's in another department. Uh, let me get you transferred over to there. And, and you know, it's like it's a round-robin thing, and the buck doesn't stop anywhere. It just keeps going. Aren't you glad? As a believer this morning, you don't have to go through all that nonsense to come into the, and to have access to God. We're not talking about access to heaven. We're talking about access to God. And all that is possible through Christ. That's your spiritual blessing you have in Christ. So, hey, when you wake up tomorrow morning, you go home today, things aren't going well, so you got a problem, so I'm saying, hey, wait a minute. I have access to God right now. You don't have to wait in line. You don't have to wait because I'm sorry he's busy. We'll get back with you just as soon as we can. And three days later, you may get a phone call. And of course, that three-day-later phone call always comes when you're not home. And so you miss that call. Well, you don't have to worry about any of that when you have access to God through Christ. Notice in verse 12 there of chapter 3, and notice what it said. We have what? We have boldness. We have boldness to come into the access of God. And that boldness is with confidence. That's assurance. And that comes by faith in Christ. Hebrews 4.16 says what? Let us therefore come boldly, where? Unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. How many times do you need some help? Aren't you glad you don't have to wait again and put, be put on hold? Or, well, uh, he's out of town. Or, we're so booked up right now, we can't get you into the office to see the doctor or the dentist for six months. Huh? I mean, isn't that what it's like? Did you know that, Stephen, that's what it is like now to even have a surgery? I mean, it's unbelievable. About the only way you can even be administered anymore for any type of an emergency type surgery is you better be drugged in there by the, the, by the ambulance and have an arm cut off and a leg cut off and, and a bullet wound, and they may rush you into surgery or not. They may say, well, the surgeon is not here we'll have to get one that's on call, and right now he's out of town. How many have experienced that? And I mean, we've all gone through that. And if you've had any dealings with that in the past, in the past several months, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But aren't you so glad that we have access to God, we have boldness to come into his throne. The word there means, that boldness means, literally means to be speak freely. It means you can come to God freely. And you have this confidence, you have this assurance, because it's faith in Christ. Hebrews 10, 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. So thank God we have access to God, and that's one of your spiritual blessings that you have in Christ. You ought to go out here just shouting and and praising God, because no matter what, you have access. You're, and you know what? You're not denied. You're not turned away. Isn't it, isn't it wonderful? Well, a, another spiritual blessing we have in Christ, believe it or not, is found here in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 7 through 16. We're not going to read all the verses, but those are gifts given for the body. 
spiritual blessings. They're gifts given for the body. Now, and we'll just kind of go down through it here right quickly. A, notice with every believer is gifted. Every believer is gifted. Every believer is gifted. So with no excuse. Every believer's gift costs a great price. I gave you the verses where that's found in Ephesians there. So in Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7, the scripture tells us every believer is gifted. In verses 8 through 9, every believer's gift cost a great price. In verse 11, every believer's gift is Christ-centered. It's centered around the person of Christ. Verse 11 tells us that. Then as we move verses 12 through 16, we find that every believer's gift, now every believer has a gift, right? Has a threefold purpose. Just think the gift you have, the spiritual gift that you have, has a threefold purpose. All right, verses 12 through 16. And we're not reading the verses, I'm just giving them there to you, all right? First of all, it has an immediate purpose. It's an immediate purpose. In verse 12, it tells us to equip others. To equip others. Okay, what is, what is, see, so as a pastor, I have the gift of teaching, and so what is my immediate purpose? That is to equip you. Okay, all right, and so then, then we move on, and then we find that in verse 13, uh, every believer's part of that purpose is an eternal purpose. It's an eternal purpose. And verse 13 tells us that is to become a mature person like Christ. To become a mature person like Christ. What's the third person purpose? It's personal. It's personal. All right? And so we have threefold in that. All right? In verse 14. It's personal. That is uh, to no longer be as children. Part of that gift is so that you'll no longer be as children. In other words, no longer be immature. That's why you have gifts. Okay, so that you're not immature. Secondly, in that personal growth is to grow up in all things. That's in verse 15. We're to grow up in all things. In other words, now we're to be mature. We're not to be immature, we're to be mature. And then the third purpose for that personal gift that you have is to do, uh-oh, that's the one nobody likes, to do, say it with me, to do, what are we to do? One's part in building up the church, the body of Christ, verse 16. Now you can go back and read those verses, 7 through 16, uh, with your notes and you'll see that in those verses. I just wanted to break that one down a little bit on your uh, 26th spiritual blessing we have in Christ is you have a gift. And you may have more than one, but you have one. And it's given to you by the Holy Spirit as He wills. And that's why we read a lot of that over in, in 1 Corinthians and we also in the Romans, the book of Romans, where Paul deals with those gifts. Well, let's look at Ephesians 5.2. Wherever we got one or a few verses, we'll look at it. We'll move along in chapter 5 now. In chapter, and we're going to come back to a few others that I found yesterday that I missed in the beginning. All right? Look at verse 2 with me of chapter 5. Everybody in verse 2? Chapter 5. And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us, notice, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. So your 27th, now these are not in order, okay? Just put given numbers to them. Your 27th spiritual blessing you have in Christ is the fact that Jesus loves you. That's a spiritual blessing. And he sacrificed himself for you. That's how much he loved you. That's found there in verse 2 of chapter 5. All right? and, and what was that? Well, he was an offering. He made himself an offering. And that offering became a sweet-smelling savor unto God. That's in your notes there if you're taking notes. All right? 
So isn't it glad to know this morning I have access to God? And you might say, man, I've had a rough week. Nothing's gone right. Seems like everything's gone wrong. No matter what's happened, one thing after another, I can't believe how many things I've gone through, how many difficulties I've had, how many trials I've had. And, and sometimes you, you get to wondering, God, are you there? And sometimes you get to wondering, and you may question, Lord, if you really loved me, I wouldn't be going through all this. Anybody ever been there? Only natural and human for us to sometimes think those things and wonder that we may. But hey, guess what? Jesus loves you today. And he sacrificed himself for you. So what a wonderful spiritual blessing that I have in Christ to know that Jesus loves me. Two. It's in your notes there. So isn't that great? What a wonderful privilege to know Jesus loves me. Someone says, well, how much does me? Well, the verse said it. He sacrificed himself for you. That's how much he loves you. Okay? And that sacrifice became a, a, that offering that he made. And by the way, you see, it not only was it a sacrifice, but it was an offering. And when it's an offering, that's a free will. Hello. Jesus freely offered himself for us. Okay, that's how much he loves us. And just think, that sacrifice was a sweet-smelling odor uh, to the Lord. Well, we move to chapter 6 now, and we'll come back. But over in chapter 6, go with me in chapter 6, beginning in verse number 10. Everybody in chapter 6, verse 10? All right. Everybody in chapter 6, verse 10. Here's another wonderful spiritual blessing that we have in Christ. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Here it is. Put on the whole armor of God. Did you know that God's armor is a spiritual blessing? And, of course, we know there are six pieces of armament there, and we're not going to go through that. But we have this wonderful spiritual blessing, and that is the armor of God. And God gives us that armor in there. He tells us why. Because we're going to be in a battle against the devil and we need to be protected. Hello. And so God has given us spiritual armament to put on. And that's a spiritual blessing. God's armor. See, you, you don't think about any of these things when you look at it and read it. That, wow, that's a, you know, you say, okay, good, the armor of God. And I'm to put on the helmet and the breastplate. And you read down through it. And, and you look at all that great stuff and you say, okay. But, but do you stop to think that that's a spiritual blessing? Well, no, it just I'm reading and Paul's telling me, he's instructing me here. As a believer, I need to put this armor on uh, to fight the devil. Okay, but that armor is a spiritual blessing that God has given to you in Christ. So praise the Lord. Now, go back to Ephesians chapter 1 with me. As we take a look at our next one in verse in number 29, Ephesians chapter 1. Everybody in Ephesians 1? Okay, and Ephesians 2. All right, Ephesians chapter 1. Everybody got in Ephesians chapter 1. We missed this coming through, or I did. So we come back and we're going to pick it up, okay? All right, if it's number 29, here's another spiritual blessing that we don't even think about it as being a spiritual blessing sometimes. Verse 6 of chapter 1. Everybody in verse 6, chapter 1? All right, to the praise of God, right, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved. Now, when we went through this in the first five, what the, the spiritual blessing we took out of that was that we were accepted, and we forgot to take a look that His grace is a spiritual blessing. So, you see, we come back through it again. A little bit here. The grace of God. And what does Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says? We know what that says. You don't have to look it up, but you know what it says. For by grace are ye saved. So you see, another spiritual blessing we have is God's grace. That's God's unmerited favor towards you and I. Paul closed out nearly every one of his letters 
sometimes even open his letters, that may the grace of God be upon you. May all of God's favor be upon you. That's what God's grace is, his unmerited favor. May all of his grace be upon you. And by the way, God's grace is a spiritual, is a spiritual blessing. You're not going to get saved apart from it. And so thank God for his grace. And boy, you go through all that and the marvelous grace of God and all the favor of God and just think, man, this is God's. And you say, wow, I was saved by grace. Amen. Okay, and you're thinking of salvation. You're thinking of being saved and born again, and you don't stop to think that that same grace is a spiritual blessing. Another spiritual blessing that you have in Christ. Wow, this is wonderful. All right, in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, we missed this the first time around. So we're coming back to it again. Everybody in chapter verse 1, chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship in Christ. Okay, well, hang on here with me. Jesus, unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, if you remember when we went through that first time around, we went through looking at that process, but the one thing we forgot, new creation. You are created. There's another spiritual blessing. You were created in Christ. See, if we don't take the time, church, to really take a look at these things and look at the verses and pick out words and statements and phrases, we lose so much of the inside of it. And so many of these verses we've heard so many times and read them so many times and remembered them, we, we lose sight of some of the truth that's in there for us. And so thank God you are a new creation. What's a good verse for that that we always quote? 2 Corinthians 5.17. What does 2 Corinthians 5.17 tell us? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, what? Be in Christ. He is a what? New creature or a new creation. So one of your spiritual blessings is that you're a new creation. Isn't that great? You go around tomorrow, I'm a new creation. You go today, I'm a new creation. These are spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Christ. I'm having fun going through these, and I had fun going back through it even yesterday, back through Ephesians again, just looking at the chapters, the words, the, uh, reading the, the verses, and saying, oh man, I missed this first time around. We missed this the first time through. We missed this, so wow, there's a whole lot more than 30 here. All right, so praise God. If you notice, okay, all right, here's another one we missed. Another one, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 21. And of course, I gave you some other verses there, John 8, 32, 36, John 14, 6, John 17, 17. We'll make comment on just a minute. But let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Everybody in chapter 4 and verse 21. Let's take a look at the 31st spiritual blessing we have in Christ. Chapter 4 and verse 21. Are you ready for me? See if you can pick it out. If so be that ye have heard him... And have been taught by him as the truth in what? In Jesus, in Christ. Another spiritual blessing that you have today, church, is the truth. Now, folks, you ought to be grateful and thankful for that one. Because of all the stuff that goes on television and the radio and the news and the media and everything else, very seldom anymore do we find anybody telling the truth or giving us the truth. But in Christ... You have the truth. What a spiritual bl a blessing. In John 8, 32, what's John 8, 32 says? For you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. Everybody says set, but if you read the scripture, it says make. John 8, 32. Make you free. Now, and speaking of that, who is the truth? And in verse 36 of John 8, 32, he said, If you have the Son, you shall be free indeed. Because why? The Son is the truth. Right? Are you with me? That's why John 14, 6, what did Jesus say to Thomas? I am the truth. And what did Jesus say? What did Jesus pray in John 17, 17 in his prayer, his priestly prayer? 
Father, sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Aren't you glad this morning, as you're sitting here, you have the truth in your hand? You have the truth in your life. You have the truth in your bosom. You have the truth in your spirit. And you're able to worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. And how can you do that? It's because you have the spiritual blessing of truth in your life. Wow. Doesn't get any better than that. So there's again, we sometimes miss some key words in the verses because we're looking at it in another light. That's what's really cool. And what we saw the first time through in that verse was good, and that was right too. See, this is what's neat about the Word of God. All right? Now we're going to kind of skip out of Ephesians, I think, pretty much for, uh, for now and, and move on. Those were just a few others this morning, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, and 31. Those were seven more we found in Ephesians, giving us 37 so far. And we might even find more than that. All right, but here's another one, uh, number 32. Oh, you're going to like this one. How many of you know what John 3, 15 and 16 tell us? And 36, what did Jesus say? I give unto them eternal life. You shall have eternal life. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift, what? But the gift of God is what? Eternal life. John 3, 15 and 16, whoever believes on the Son have what? Eternal life in John 15, 3, 15, he says eternal life. And in John 3, 16, he says everlasting life. Okay? 1 John 5, 11 through 13. This is the record that God has given to us what? Eternal life. Do you realize that eternal life is a spiritual blessing? There's another spiritual blessing that you have in Christ. That's why we've entitled this series and study Spiritual Blessings in Christ. So now you have eternal life is a spiritual blessing that you have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow, that's fantastic. And what is eternal life? It's the quality of life. It's what the word eternal means. That's why in 15 he used eternal. In 16 he used everlasting. Because why? Eternal life is everlasting going to have eternal life, the quality of life. You see, when you and I are in Christ, we're going to have a quality life because why? Jesus is a quality life. And if you have his life, you're going to have a quality life. And it's going to be for eternity. It's fantastic. All right, what's another one? When we get into 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20, and Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 11, we learn about a certain ministry and, so, and, and it's happened, not only that's happened to us, but that God has given to us. And that is what? It's a big long word that starts with an R. Reconciliation, exactly. Did you know that's a spiritual gift? For we have now been reconciled to God through who? Through Jesus Christ. And Paul goes on to say that he has given us now the ministry of reconciliation so that we can go back and go out and tell others how they can be reconciled to God through a relationship in Christ. Brought back into a relationship. So just think, man, reconciliation to God. That's another spiritual gift. Are you getting a hold of all these spiritual uh, blessings you have in Christ? You're finally getting the idea that this is all about Him? Everything we have and in Him and from Him it's all about Him, and it's all from Him. And we have this wonderful reconciliation. You and I were enemies with God. We were alienated from the commonwealth, all right? Amen? And we had to be reconciled. We had to be brought back into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. So we have this wonderful spiritual blessing of reconciliation. I tell you what, you, you talk about being rich and wealthy. Man, you are worth more than every and anything in Christ. This, this is phenomenal. Here's another one we have, haven't looked at, but we are now. In Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21, 
The Bible says that you and I are declared righteous. Now, how are we declared righteous? Another big word that starts with a J. Justification. Justification. In other words, you stand right before God. We always like to say it's just as if you've never sinned. But the Bible, Jesus declares us righteous because we have been justified. Another spiritual blessing we have in Christ. Justification. Isn't that fantastic? Well, here's one I really like. I love this one all the time. Romans chapter 8 and verse 1, and then in verses 33 and 34, and then in Romans chapter 5 and verse 16. And I'm calling out these passages of Scripture for the audio audience. And for those that are listening by way of audio that don't have the guide, or those that will later listen on an audio tape or a CD when this goes out on an audio CD, that they will have, if they don't have the study guide with them, then they have where the verses they can go and look them up and see for themselves in the Word of God. But here's another one, wonderful. No blank by God. Condemnation. That's right. Romans 8, 1 says, Now therefore, there is no condemnation to them that are in Christ. No judgment, no wrath. Beautiful. I mean, just think of it. So that's why, you see, folks, as believers in Christ here this morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord, don't try to condemn anybody in here. Don't try to judge anybody and put them under condemnation because you can try that and think that all you want to. But my Bible tells me one of my spiritual blessings that I have in Christ that I am not under condemnation. There is no judgment coming upon me because Christ took my judgment for me on the cross of Calvary. Now, yes, there's consequences of sin, yes. And yes, there's accountability for sin. But there, you and I will never experience the judgment and the wrath of God Almighty, not now, not for all eternity, because my condemnation was taken care of 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary. And actually, it was taking place before the foundation of the world. But it became a reality and a physical truth. When Jesus died on the cross and said, it is finished, and then the moment you and I got saved, there is no condemnation on us. I heard a commercial last night on TV, believe it or not. And I liked it. And it shows a whole group of different people. In the commercial, they're showing different people, different ethnic groups and cultures and everything. And there was a song being played in the background about it. Uh, you know, don't, don't uh, condemn someone. Don't judge someone. Don't be critical of someone. And the song goes, until you've walked a mile in their shoes. And boy, I, that, that commercial hit me hard. And I said, man, I like that. That may be a secular commercial on television, but wow, there's some great truth in that right there. Let's not be critical. I think it was critical and judging is what they used in the song. Let's not be critical or judge someone or be critical of someone until you have walked a mile or even let's go a further, a twain, two miles in their shoes. What, 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 what good truth in that commercial. And so I thought, wow, that, that's good. That's a good thought. That's good. All right, so no condemnation. Praise God. Praise God. No condemnation. Amen. 36, another one. Oh, you'll love this one. In John chapter 7 and verses 37 through 39. Now, you've got to look all these up as I did, but you, know, we don't, you can see if we did these this morning. We'd only get through about two or three of them every week because we'd be looking up a lot. And then, of course, when you read the Scripture, you're going to stop and make comments on it, and, and you're going to be a while. It just really is. So I wrote them down for you, gave them to you, so you'd have them. All right, John 7, 37 through 39, Acts three nineteen, and Matthew eleven twenty eight. The Scripture teaches us that you and I can have spiritual 
refreshment. Refreshment. How many of you need refresh today? How many of you need a time of refreshment? I was listening to uh, the new signature sound of Ernie Haas and uh, the new signature sound, uh, his new group was Signature Sound. And uh, they were on Gaither Homecoming last night. And uh, Bill was interviewing them. And, and this is recent and new because Bill's in a little over 80 now. And you know, he's, he's struggling a little bit speaking in his memory. You could see it in the interview as he's interviewing Ernie. You know who Ernie Haas is, of course. And uh, it was just uh, Ernie Haas came to Bill and asked Bill, he said, we want to take there's something, I think it was Gaither, uh, or Gaither's music or Gaither, 50th anniversary. And uh, he, he came to Bill and he told Bill he wanted to take what, what uh, Bill and Gloria, what they called, I think he, if I refer, he called their happy songs of the old songs that they wrote. And uh, he wanted to do it in the traditional way, traditional style. And, and not take and lose any of that. And, and Bill was uh, just thanking Ernie that uh, he was so grateful that they wanted to do that and they wanted to do it in the, in the old style and keep it uh, in, in that, in the, the feeling of it, the movement of it, the message of it, and uh, that Bill was very grateful for it. And you know, just he was kind of praising Ernie, saying that they did a fantastic and fabulous job. And of course, they were promoting this new album of that uh, on their 30 minute Gaither program. And uh, so when they finish that little bit of talk, they go into you know, one of the songs and uh, had to do with uh, uh, God's, uh, it's beginning to rain. And, and Ernie started it off and did a great job. I mean, you could just, you could just sense the spirit of God uh, in the song and, and the people sitting there in a small studio, just a small group and uh, beginning to reign, and, uh, and, and the refreshing uh, of the Holy Spirit, uh, refreshing of the believer, a time of season, beginning to reign of God's spirit and blessing down on us. And uh, it's an old song that Ben and Gloria wrote, and they just did a, a great job. And uh, I thought about that and was thinking about, you know, one of our things we're gonna look at today is, is that time of refreshing. Folks, we all get tired, we all get weary, we all get beat up, and we all get run down as believers. We really do. And uh, there's those times that we need refreshing. We need a time of refreshing. And so let me encourage you to take and read those verses. John chapter 7, 37 through 39, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Matthew chapter 11 and verse 28 in your spare time and, your, and so forth. And let those verses as you read them, maybe read them two or three times and just allow the scripture of God, which I like to call, let it be that bomb in Gilead. Let it be that time of refreshing. And by the way, that's a spiritual blessing. Hello. It's a spiritual blessing, a time of refreshment. Well, wow, how we need that. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 57. We all know what that says, right? Which give us, us the victory. Did you know that victory is a spiritual blessing? Is a spiritual blessing that we have in Christ? Victory. We don't need to live in defeat and the agony of defeat. Man, we got a spiritual blessing. All right, and I didn't finish out the third page here because I really didn't know how far we'd get or where we'd stop. Uh, but well, let's look at number 38, uh, the 38th spiritual blessing here. In Romans 8, 39, 1 John 3, 1 and 2, 4 and 4, 9 through 10 and verse 16. And it speaks of the, of God, the love of God. In Romans 8, in 8, Romans 8, 39, the Apostle Paul says, What? What shall separate us from the 
love of God. Did you know that the love of God is a spiritual blessing? And you can read those verses later, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, uh, 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, and verse 16. All speak of the love of God that God has for us and gives to us. Well, here's another one. In John chapter 10, verses 27 and 28, Jesus in John chapter 10 is talking about the good shepherd, and I am the good shepherd, and uh, you know I'm in the Father's hand, and you're in my hand. Nobody's going to pluck us out. Amen. And in Romans chapter 8, verses 30 and 39, Paul gives again, again, what shall separate us from the love of God? And he goes on with that whole list that nothing is going to do that. Because why? We have this wonderful spiritual security. We are secure in Christ. Man, if, if, if we're in Jesus' hand this morning, and we are, because He said so, and He's in the Father's hand, which He is, and He said so, how much more secure can you get than that? You can't. You can't. It's impossible. You can't get any better than that. And so your security that you have in Christ today is a spiritual blessing. So that means when dark times come and bad times come and the boogeyman's knocking on your door and you hear strange sounds at night out in your house or your yard, you are secure in Christ. Nothing's going to separate you. Well, here's another one I like and we'll finish with this one. We'll pick it up next week with verse 41, but let's do number 40 uh, today and then next week we'll get 41 uh, and through 44 and move right on to 45 and on down the line, all right? Number 40. From darkness, Colossians 1.13, Acts 26.18. What does Paul say? We have been, starts with a D, deliverance. We have been delivered from darkness. Another spiritual blessing. You see, now when we read those verses, and we just are going through in our reading time, devotional time, and we just read for it, we don't stop to look and think that, or even give thought to the fact that deliverance from darkness, I was once in, in darkness and now I've been delivered from that, that that's a spiritual blessing. And by the way, that deliverance only comes in Christ. That's why you see you got to be in Christ. And then you get to enjoy some of these wonderful spiritual blessings. Next week we'll look at one, we'll look at another, we'll look at another, we'll look at another. Oh man, they get better it seems like as we move on. And we'll move right on and so far I have 78 of them. So we'll see how far we get. So I hope when you finish you keep these things. And keep these together and put them together because man this is something to go back to over and over in your spiritual devotions and whatever and remind yourself of the spiritual blessings you have in Christ. And church, especially when you're going through tough times and you're going through difficult times and you're going through times you don't understand. Even this week, you know, count it all joy. Give God the praise. Rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Give thanks in everything for everything. For this is the will of God. And I hope all this week you have reminded yourself that you know all things are going to work together for good to them who love God and to them who are called according to His purpose, whom He did foreknow and predestined. Oh, hallelujah. So all things are going to work together for good. You don't see it, you don't understand it. But hey, guess what? He's coming. And He's coming in the clouds of glory. And so it could be soon. I think very soon. Soon. And very soon, we're going to see the king. Amen. Amen. You know, we've preached about it so long, and we've studied it so long through the years, and as we've grown up, and even like what we're seeing going on right now, we go, I can't believe all this is happening. What's going on? Well, he told us it was going to happen. He told us these things were going to take place in the end time, and all this is getting ready to set the stage for the coming of the Antichrist and the tribulation hour, which means we got to be out of here, church, before all that takes place. So, hey, he's coming, and he's coming in the clouds of glory, and we're going to see him. Remember, at the midnight cry, the groom is coming for the bride. When the Father says, 
go get the bride. And that's all we're waiting for right now. Everything else has been done. All in line with the Jewish wedding. It's fantastic. We're just waiting for the father to say, it's time, son. Go get your bride. And we're out of here. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the time today we've had in your word. Thank you for a reminder again to us of all these wonderful spiritual blessings that we have in Christ. Thank you for all of them. Thank you for helping us to see them. Thank you for causing our minds to take a moment or two to reflect on them. And we'll give you all the praise and glory for it now. In the wonderful name of Jesus, amen and amen. And praise the Lord.